Hey guys, this is Awesome Arcades. Just a quick video to show you how to plug in and set up your board. There's a lot of other videos on the website that show this, but I'll do this real quick. Inside the cabinet, you're gonna see this. This is your JAMA harness. This is your game board. Some boards have different cases on them, but all boards have this, these teeth. Your harness, this part, it's gonna go onto those teeth. And so make sure that you line up these three wires, yellow, red, black, and I'm gonna have your harness marked. There's a little black line there. If you're wondering what that's for, that is gonna match up with this. And so to do this, you take your thumb and your forefinger, you put that on there and just kind of get it lined up. Again, make sure that these three wires match up with these three teeth. And there's a little notch cut out there. Kind of guide that on and press it first from the bottom and then from the top, kind of like that. Now, this is kind of hard to push on. It's not hard, but it's snug, right? Because you don't want this thing to slip off while you're playing. And so again, to remove it, take that there. The other thing you gotta plug in is your VGA cable. That's the VGA cable, goes on like that. And so that's it. I mean, that's how you plug it in. If you have a trackball, these little doodads here are gonna be marked COM3 and COM4, three and four. On the board, you're gonna see this here. It says three and four. So you would take this and plug that down there like that. And then you'll notice over here, the board's gonna be plugged in and sitting right there. Hey, awesome arcades. I'm gonna try to make this one of the shortest videos I have on the website. I'm just gonna show you how to set up your new 60 game board. There's other videos on the website that show you how to plug it in. It takes two seconds. You just mount that blue thing onto there and then plug in your cable. When you plug it in, if there's a green light, you're good to go. That means the board works. If the light's red, there's something wrong with your board. If it's yellow, that means the board's thinking. Like right when you turn it on, it could be yellow for a little bit. Dip switch number one, these are the little light switch guys. Dip switch one flips the screen. So if you turn it on, you're sitting at this, this is the one player side, obviously the game should be displaying this way. If it's not, if it's on that side looking that way, turn dip switch one and turn it back on. But dip switch one should be in the down position. Dip switch two, don't worry about, that's just, it says yes, I have an LED monitor, not a cathode ray tube, the old 80 monitors, 80s monitors. Dip switch three should be in the up position. That's how you save your high scores if you like that, which most people do. Dip switch four, down to play the games, up to make changes. So dip switch four is in the up position. I've turned the machine on, let me close the lid, and uh, actually let me do this, I already have it on. So just to show you, turn it off, turn it back on again with dip switch four in the up position. Now you're gonna see this screen. It says S2. Now the cabinet is labeled A, B, C, and this is one player and two player start. A is S1, B is S2, C is S3. So S1, S2, S3, that'll just kind of help you out. So to get to the next screen, and just know to go forward, S2, to go backward, S3. So if you, sh if you overshoot your mark or you go farther than the page you were looking at, for whatever reason, just hit S3 and you'll go back a screen. So the first thing we're gonna do is S2. It says if you wanna clear high scores, it tells you how to do it. Next thing we're gonna do is the setup screen. So for me to do that, again, I'm gonna go back to the beginning just to show you S3, S3, or C twice. Now we're gonna do B, B. Now what we wanna do is we wanna get down here, we wanna change it from free play. It's already set up, but you want that to be yes. I believe it comes from the factory is no. You also wanna make sure the cab that is set up in cocktail mode, not stand-up mode. If it's in stand-up mode and you choose two players, both players are gonna play from this side because in a stand-up cabinet, if the screen flipped, it would just be upside down. And so in order to get to that, and this is the part that usually kind of confuses people, you press down on the joystick one time. Then if you press down again, it's gonna take you to the next screen. You don't wanna do that. So to get here, you press right. Okay, and I'll show you that one more time. So from this screen, we go to S2 to get to the setup screen. And just so you know, this is coin, one coin, one credit, two coins, one credit. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. 
The demo music, I've got it turned off. If you turn the board on and there's like some kind of background music playing, some people like that. I think it's annoying, so I turn it off, but that's what that's for. Uh, game demo sound, uh, I think those are kind of the same thing there. Free play, yes or no? So again, you press down and then right. And then right again. Now, when you get to the thing that you wanna change, you'll come down here and it tells you S1 to turn something on or off. So we're gonna try that. Free play, yes. Again, S1 is A. Now, when you change it to what you want, you need to save it. In order to save it, you gotta press the one player start button. So we went to free play, we hit it yes, and then we're gonna press the one player start button. You'll know you did it right because it's gonna say set up okay. It's now saved, you can turn it off and turn it back on again. But we're also gonna show you how to change cabinet. I believe this will be defaulted, it'll say cabinet upright to controls. Okay, you need it in cocktail mode. Cocktail mode just means if you're playing Frogger and you're playing on this side, you get splatted by a car, you want it to flip over for your kid or your wife or your husband or whoever's sitting over there to play. And so, again, press right on the joystick, not down. Cabinet cocktail, again, to change it, S1, S1, upright two controls. That's what it'll, it should be set up at. That's the default. You don't want that if you have a cocktail table. Now, if you have a stand-up, that's good. But if you have the cocktail, change it and then save it. You're good to go. Now, if you keep pressing B, you'll go through all of the individual games. In the individual games, you can make changes. For example, here's Ms. Pac-Man. You can increase the number of lives. You can increase or decrease the difficulty level, the game speed. Uh, what does that say? Beam dot, I don't even know what that means. Um, but you can play with that if you want. It's always set at the factory defaults that the original versions of the games came with, which is what most people like. Um, but I like, for example, on Donkey Kong, I like to give myself extra lives. And so you can go on here and bump that up to five lives. That's just how many lives you get for cr per credit. Bear in mind that this board does not have the ability to exit in the middle of play. So on some of the game boards, like the 412, you can press and hold the start button and then you can exit out of the game in the middle of playing it. On this board, you can't do that. You just have to die. So if you have five lives, you have to die five times. So you might wanna consider that when you're adding additional lives. Again, keep pressing B and you're gonna power through every single one of the 60 games on this board. <clears throat> then eventually you'll get to a thing that says volume adjust. Okay, you can play with the volume there. I mean, there's a volume switch on the side of the board. You could also play with the volume here. Some purists, uh, like video game fanatics, will say there's a, a specific balance that they like to use between the volume on the board and the volume on the cabinet to get optimal sound. I've never noticed much of a difference. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, this machine gets a lot louder than uh, I would ever want. And so, but that's there for you. The next screen you're gonna come to, this is the dip switch settings. So this is how we test the board. If you're curious, this is how we test a brand new cabinet. We put it together and I need to make sure that it works when you get it. And so this is how you test it, up, down, left, right. Let me come over here to the two player side, you can see that, up, down, left, right. And so if I was to push everything on here, everything would eventually turn red. If there's anything blue, I've got a problem. Um, those are blue because I didn't push the buttons, but everything works, it's a brand new cabinet. Uh, but yeah, you get to the final screen and uh, you're good to go. So now you can turn it off and hit dip switch four. I may as well show you since we're here. So turn it off, come back over here, lift up your lid, come down to dip switch number four, force for fun. And put that little guy down, that little light switch. So you can see what I'm talking about there. Down, up. So dip switch four is in the down position. And we are going to turn the machine back on takes a little while to boot up and oh you can see so I just turned it on and you can see what I was talking about earlier there's that yellow blinking light that just means it's thinking if it's green it's okay if there's a solid red light there there's a problem with the board I mean it's pretty rare that there's ever an issue with the board uh, but it is a nice feature to know that if there's a problem you know exactly where it is so you don't have to worry about oh gosh what's the problem is it this thing is it that thing it'll tell you there's an issue with your board 
And so when you do turn it on, it's gonna say system initialization. This will count up to 60. Just so you know, if the machine is in coin operated mode and like right when you get it, if you don't wanna do any of that, you just wanna play. A lot of people just say, hey, I wanna play immediately. If you open the coin door, inside the coin door down here, when you drop a quarter through that slot, the coin goes through the coin mechanism. And if it's the right size, if it's a slug or something, it falls out into the coin box. But if it's the right size, it gets channeled through the correct grooves and it's gonna come down here and press that little spring. So you can actually open the coin door and hit that three times, close it back up and lock it. And then you've got three credits. I just realized I'm talking over a fan here. <laughs> so there you go. And so, okay, so I just turned it on and I'm pushing the joystick and nothing's moving. What you need to do is to get things going, you gotta press the, is it the A or B button? Uh, it's the one player start button. Okay, so right when you turn it on, if nothing's responding, because I've had people call me and they go, hey, it doesn't work, press the one player start button to get the action going. And then if you want to preview a game, you can press the A button. Wait, is it A or B? Yeah, it's A. A button is going to give you a preview. To get out of the preview screen, back to the screen where you choose the games, you press the A button again. And then if there's a game that you want to play, and again, if you're at this screen and you're pushing the joystick and nothing's happening, press the one player start button. Basically, it's uh, it's locked until you add credits, right? Since it's on free play, if you press the one player start button, that would be the same thing as adding a credit. If it's in coin operated mode, you have to add a credit that way or the screen will be locked up. And so if you just plug it in right when you get it and you don't switch it to free play, you're gonna have to add a credit the way that I showed you or use a quarter uh, in order to get it to respond. But let's go over here to Frogger. So we're in Frogger. Now, on this board, if you wanna play two players, you can choose two players from the menu screen like this. If you're using the 412 board, you actually have to go into the game before you could choose two players. So if you're on the, me the menu screen on the 412 board, the menu looks a little different, but it's fundamentally the same concept. You can't choose two players from the menu screen. If you try to press two players from this menu screen, nothing will happen. You have to go into the game, and then once the machine becomes Frogger, you know, Frogger is the game that it's loaded up as, then you could choose two players on the 412 board. On this 60 game board, if you want to play two players for Frogger, you simply press the two player button from the menu screen. And now you'll notice that it's flipped over here. And I have the volume turned down for this video, by the way. Uh, but you get the gist here. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. I guess this video is longer than I thought it was going to be. It's 11 minutes, but, uh, well, I try to be thorough. Uh, but I think this video should be really helpful.